In this video, I'll show you how to make an oval starting with a foundation chain that has six stitches in it. So to start with, we're gonna create a slip knot. And to create a slip knot, you're gonna wanna position your yarn so that the yarn tail is to the left and then the yarn connected to the yarn balls to the right. And you're making this sort of candy cane shape. And what we're gonna do is take the yarn tail and cross it over and on top of the yarn connected to the ball and hold on to that intersection and pick it up. Now we're gonna take our left hand and put our thumb and our index finger under the loop that formed. And this is why I like to call this the number four. And now we're going to pick up the stem of the four by flipping our hand around like so, plucking that stem, pulling it through the loop, and then pulling on the yarn tail to tighten it and create a knot. And this is called a slip knot because it's adjustable still. We're gonna now put this slip knot on our hooks. If you're right-handed, the slip knot will go to the left of your hook, and if you are left-handed, it will go to the right of the hook. Now get into crocheting position, and you want this actually, this uh, slip knot, to be actually a bit tighter on your hook than you normally would crochet because you want a really tight foundation chain to minimize any holes that might appear from doing this method to create an oval. So I um, have it pretty tight. So I can still get my, the tip of my hook through it pretty easily, but it is tighter than I normally would go. And one tip I have for you to make it easier to control the yarn is to hold on to the piece as close as possible to the hook whenever you're working with it. So now we're gonna create a st chain stitch which means yarning over and then pulling it through the loop on the hook. So if you rotate your piece, you can see the V that formed. And remember, try to keep the loops on the hook a bit tighter than normal as you create now the second chain stitch, and the third, and notice how every time I create a chain stitch, I'm actually moving my yarn hand to hold onto the piece as close as possible to the hook because it's a lot easier to work with the yarn when your hand is really close to the hook versus when it's out down here. So I'm gonna make a total of six. Here we go. And now you can see six Vs. We are going to put a single crochet stitch through the second V from the hook, the second stitch from the hook which you might see written in a pattern as saying in the second chain from the hook, which is over here. And we're gonna split that V. You know, normally when we do stitches, we put the hook under the entire V, but as you can see, that would mean there's nothing for the hook to grab onto. So that's why we're gonna split the V instead. And you might need to use your yarn hand to help guide the hook through if you made those stitches super tight. If it's too tight, then just I would say undo, redo that, that foundation chain again. But we're gonna do a single, chain, a single crochet stitch like normal. So yarn over, pull it through just the first loop on the hook. So you've got two loops left on your hook. Yarn over again, pull it through both loops on the hook. And grab your handy dandy stitch marker to mark the very first stitch of this round. It's gonna be helpful later on as you try to keep track of what number of stitches to put where. Okay. So now we're gonna put a single crochet stitch in every stitch left in this foundation chain, except for the very last stitch. So that means we're gonna do a total of three more single crochet stitches. And now when I get to the very last stitch, I'm gonna actually put three single crochet stitches at this spot. And by the way, when I was beginning, I used to not really be able to tell if this little nubbin, this little knot at the end, was just a really tight stitch or if it was a knot. And my tip for you there is to just pull on the yarn tail and see what happens. If that thing gets tighter, it means it's the knot. All right, but let's say you can see that V that represents the last stitch in the foundation chain. We're gonna put three single crochet stitches in here. And notice how I'm actually starting to rotate my piece because 
what I'm ultimately trying to do at this point is create that rounded part of the oval and I'm getting slowly into position so that I can now crochet into the other side of the foundation chain. So we had only crocheted under one side of the V, now we're gonna crochet under the other side of the V. And also, fun tip, if you wanna save some time with weaving in ends, you can, when you crochet this part now, crochet over the yarn tail as well. So I'll show you what that means. But going back to the piece that we have here, we just put three single crochet stitches in the last stitch of the foundation chain. We still need to put a single crochet stitch in every stitch now, leading up to that very first stitch. So that means we need to put three more single crochet stitches, one in each of these other sides of the foundation chain. And notice how I've put the yarn tail over the hook as well after I put my hook into a stitch. That's what I mean by crocheting over the yarn tail. Let me show that to you again. I put my hook into or under just the other side of the V that represents the other side of the foundation chain stitch. I drape the yarn tail over the hook as well. So now it looks like I've got three strands of yarn on my hook. And then I yarn over and pull it through those first two loops on the hook. So I left, I'm left with two loops on the hook. Yarn over again and then pull it through. So here is my last one. We're not done yet. We need to make this other side even with this side. So on this side at the end, we put three single crochet stitches in there. We already have one of those three single crochet stitches over here on the other side of the oval because that was the very first stitch that you made. We need to put, therefore, a total of two single crochet stitches into this last remaining stitch. Whoops, I accidentally did a slip stitch. There we go. So that's one, and now here's two. Right now you can see how this looks like an oval and you're gonna keep on going, crocheting the next stitch. The next stitch is gonna be the first stitch of the next round and it goes in the stitch marked by the stitch marker because the stitch marker always marks the first stitch of every round, like so. I just wanted to show you how this looks much nicer and much more like an oval once you begin the next round. And notice how, by the way, I still have some tiny holes here, but they are smaller than they would have been if I didn't crochet that foundation chain really tightly. That's why I was recommending that you crochet the foundation chain real tight. If you don't, these holes would be much bigger 